Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by James Whitcomb Riley, an American poet who lived from 1849 to 1916. He was known as the Hoosier poet and the children's poet because he wrote, well, lots of poetry for children and and lots of humorous poetry. Interestingly, of the approximately 1,000 poems Riley wrote, the majority are in dialect. His most famous works include Little Orphan Annie and The Raggedy Man. But the poem that I'm going to read today is called When the Frost is on the Pumpkin. This is how it goes. When the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder is in the shock, and you hear the kyuk and gobble of the strut and turkey cock, and the clacking of the guineas and the clucking of the hens and the roosters hallelujah as he tiptoes on the fence. Oh, it's then's the times the feller is a feeling at his best, with the rising sun to greet him from a night of peaceful rest as he leaves the house bareheaded and goes out to feed the stock. When the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder is in the shock, there's something kind of hearty like about the atmosphere when the heat of summer's over and the cool and fall is here. Of course, we miss the flowers and the blossoms on the trees and the mumble of the humming birds and buzzing of the bees. But the air is so appetizing, and the landscape through the haze of a crisp and sunny morning over the early autumn days is a picture that no painter has the color in to mock. When the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder is in the shock, the husky, rusty rustle of the tossels of the corn and the raspment of the tangled leaves as golden as the morn. The stubble and the furries, kind of lonesome-like, but still a-preaching sermons to us of the barns they growed to fill. The straw stack in the meadow and the reaper in the shed, the hosses in their stalls below, the clover overhead. Oh, it sets my heart a-clickin' like a tickin' of the clock when the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock. So as you know, every now and then, at least if you're a longtime listener, you know this, I like to uh, drop in poetry that is uh, specifically for children. But I keep finding that, you know, poetry for children is often just poetry for people. Um, and one of the things I like about this poem is that, yeah, there's, there's this sense of dialect about it, right? There's all these uh, unique ways of saying things, these sort of colloquialisms that are actually, you know, somewhat poetic in their own way. And yet in this, there's a sense in which it seems like perhaps he's, he's making fun of whatever character this is. But I find that as the poem goes on, there's a sort of um, contemplativeness to it, right? Like maybe there's a there's a farmer who there's the, he's kind of maybe humming to himself or singing a work song or something like that, maybe making it up as he goes along, even because of course you know a long time ago everybody learned a little bit of poetry, and uh, he's he's making the work pass by or he's just sort of enjoying the day and um, you know enjoying the language that he speaks that he, that he lives with every day. But by the end, there's the sort of sense that. Um, there's something transcendent about what he's seeing. He wouldn't put it that way, right? He would say, it sets my heart a clicking like the ticking of a clock. Um, he talks about, you know, the furries preaching sermons to us of the barns they grow to fill, things like that. There's, there's all these sort of subtle references to the more transcendent elements, the transcendent um, uh, pieces or parts of, of this sort of workaday life. Um, not unlike, I suppose, the Ted Kuzer poem that I read on Monday, or Ted Kuzer in general, um, or lots of American and uh, and British poetry th- over the years that that sort of champions everyday people. I suppose that's what I like about this poem. Um, it is sort of silly in a sense. Um, it's 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 fun. It's playful. It's colloquial. But you know, we remember it uh, because it's uh, there's maybe that little bit of something more that's that's in there as well. So here is when the frost is on the pumpkin by James Wickham Riley, one more time. When the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock, and you hear the kyuk and gobble of the strutting turkey cock, and the clacking of the guineas and the clucking of the hens, and the rooster's hallelujah as he tiptoes on the fence, oh, it's then the times a feller is a-feeling at his best, with the rising sun to greet him from the night of peaceful rest, as he leaves the house bareheaded and goes out to feed the stock, when the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the... St- when the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder is in the shock. There's something kind of hearty like about the atmosphere when the heat of summer's over and the cool and fall is here. Oh, of course, we miss the flowers and the blossoms on the trees and the mumble of the humming birds and buzzing of the bees. But the air is so appetizing, and the landscape through the haze of a crisp and sunny morning of the early autumn days is a picture that no painter has the color in the mock. When the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock. 
the husky, rusty rustle of the tossels of the corn, and the raspin' of the tangled leaves as golden as the morn, the stubble and the furries, kind of lonesome-like, but still a-preaching sermons to us of the barns they grow to fill, the straw stack in the meadow and the reaper in the shed, the hosses in their stalls below, the clover overhead. Oh, it sets my heart a-clickin' like the tickin' of a clock when the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you.